Hey, how you doing? It's me, Jeff Loveland of Faithful United, and we are here with special guest, Carlos Padilla. How you doing, Carlos? Doing well. How you doing, guys out there? We are so excited to have you on here today, and uh, if any of you have not seen a Journey episode before, it's about sharing how God is moving in cities, in nations, in people's lives, and just, it's about glorifying Him. Amen. And seeing how God's moving. So, Carlos, um, I'm, I'm just excited to just share everything that God has done in your life and what how he moves through you and one thing I love about what you do is you share a you share the gospel but you simplify it so that people can fully understand and truly know who our Lord is amen yeah and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to just share your heart what God's doing and yeah it's exciting awesome yeah well thank you for having me on guys I mean Love everything you guys are doing through Faithful United, and <laughs> that's you. what it's going to take to bring this revival and yeah. get people restored back to the reconciliation of the Good Father, you yeah. know. Um, you said the word simple, you know, that's something like I'm not very educated, so I have to be very simple. Like, it has to be very simple for me to understand, and I believe that some of the biggest lies we believe in the body of Christ are that it has to be this extravagant yes. kind of re revelation. Yes. You know, as I told you earlier yeah. before the show started... Um, Charles Spurgeon, he's a theologian, not one of my favorites, but he said one quote, and I read it two years ago, and it changed my life. He said, mm -hmm. great preachers don't bring you new revelation. No. They simply remind you of the one that's been forgotten about. And what's that? Wow. Christ and him crucified. Yes. Freedom in Christ, the message yes. of the gospel. And I think as we continue to just go back to that yes. foundation and nail that in, we'll see things around us transformed and people's lives transformed as a byproduct. As a body of Christ, we have done a great job of taking God's word and, and, and the gospel, and we've added to it. And we've added stipulations and guidelines, and, and we, we make it so difficult, for one, to just believe and realize what Jesus has done for us. Yeah, you know, the message of the cross, is, it's the day that changed everything. It split history in half. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we have to preach the gospel of righteousness, you know. Uh, one of my favorite life verses and my favorite verse ever is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he who knew no sin was made sin, mm. Jesus, so that we could become the righteousness of, wow. of, of God in Christ Jesus. And the thing is, the message of the gospel is not sin consciousness. It's not behavior modification. Mm -hmm. It's not sin management. But it's that you, when you say yes to Jesus, you get his Amen. partaking of his divine nature, which is his righteousness himself. And the more we confess our righteousness, the less sin we would have to confess. Amen. Yeah. I believe we need to hear the gospel and the love of Christ now more than ever. Amen. I believe the, uh, the devil sees his days coming to an end and he realizes, uh, oh yeah, I don't win this yeah, in absolutely. the end. And I just, there's a lot of hurting people out there right now. And there's a lot of uh, hopelessness. Uh, faithlessness, uh, mm -hmm. anger, frustration, depression, and anxiety. Absolutely. Um, I think we need to be reminded of where our hope comes from, uh, where uh, our strength comes from, right. and, and who teaches us to love people well. That's right. Yeah, the message of the gospel puts that big rock in. You know, I used to be, um, and if you are, forgive me, but I used to be one of these Christians that always pray, God, I need more strength. God, I need more wisdom. I need mm -hmm. more this. I need more that. And he, or like, I need more patience. I need more kind. I need to be kinder. And he said, why don't you just become love? Love is patient. Amen. Love Amen. is kind. Love yes. is strength. Yes. Love is hope. So I think sometimes we get into this compartmentalization of what we can give to God, like adding one recipe or one ingredient, yep. one ingredient, yep. when you can have the fullness of it now, and it's just an overflow of a byproduct in your life. Amen. You see, the thing is, I'm not a Christian to get things from God. I'm a Christian because of what he's done on the cross. Yes. And now I have unhindered fellowship through the blood of Jesus Christ. When we understand that, the byproduct is joy, peace, righteousness, yes. yep. self-control, all the fruit of the Spirit. And I think that's something we have to get reacclimated to as a mm -hmm. church, is knowing that we have the fullness of God inside of us already, and the, the overflow yep. is, is all of these great things, joy, peace, you know, thankfulness, all these things. So I don't pray, God, I need, more th I need to be more thankful. I, re I just have a revelation of what the cross did, how freedom is purchased for me, and thankfulness is just the expression, yes. the response. Yes. So I think, you know, we can get compartmentalized and just believe that God's just like feeding us like little Scooby Snacks, yes. 
we can have the whole dinner here. Yeah, we can have the absolutely. whole buffet. And thankfulness will just be a byproduct. You don't have to work to be thankful. You don't got to pray to be thankful. Yes. You simply are reminded of what Jesus has done on the cross and who you are because of it. And that joy, that peace is just an overflow Amen. of it. And I think that's what the simple gospel does. It's Amen. freedom in Christ. I, I know when someone says simple gospel, that might sound like a slight. But really what it is, is it's, it's true. We have overcomplicated and, and made things more confusing than what it should have been. Right, absolutely. And I believe um, the father of lies, uh, the one that deceives every one of us the best he can, right. the devil, I believe he makes us find ways where we can um, separate ourselves from one another, right. where we can be divided and isolated and um, view things differently and then argue over it. Right. When really we can just come together, have a conversation, and go straight to the Father and straight right. to the Gospel. Right, you know, uh, one of my other favorite verses is John chapter 8, verse 32, that you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 draw, the line in the sand is whether you know the truth or not. Yeah. If the truth makes you free, well then what that says is what you don't know about the truth is why we're still in bondage. Wow. On the other yeah. side of that verse, right? It's the, it's yeah. the opposite, the reciprocal. You see, as a church, is we, we've, we've lived a fundamental life with Jesus in our life, and maybe we've been exalting the historic Jesus, but the, the present Jesus still lives. The Bible says, as he is, yep. so are we in this world. Not as he was, yes. but as he is, that Jesus yep. is still alive through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yep. And that's how it resurrects everything us in, so we can manifest him and show that love Man. and bring that unity. You know, but the thing is, too, it's, um, I grew up for a lot of years in different churches, and I always just only related to Jesus as a historic guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. the guy who lived 2,000 years ago who did miracles. But there was really no evidence that he was alive mm. today. But when you take the word and you understand the truth, you begin to see and experience this freedom that yep. money can't yep. buy you, women can't buy you, drugs can't buy you, addiction can't buy you. Any of these other things that you would subscribe to like I did, I mean, it was just like a false, yeah. it, was, it was a means to an end, you know. And, and with the love of Christ, man, like I have a natural high now. That's called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Fellowship with Christ. It's just, um, it's that real. What I love about these journey episodes, this is episode number 63, by the way. I can't believe it's gone uh, that high in amen. such a short amount of time. Um, it's about showing how God has moved and hearing messages of hope and messages of just um, yeah. hope, love, and how God has moved in people's lives. Uh -huh. Turned one thing into that seems just down right. and, and out to something that's amazing and beautiful. Right. Yeah, and every one of us has a story and a testimony, and we have that for a reason. Absolutely. But let's talk about your story for a little bit. Yeah. Um, you uh, you're now an author. You have a book called Roar, and it's about walking. Uh, what's the full title? It's called Roar: Walking God's Power Without Apology. Amen. It's going to be available in August. It's about divine healing. And my journey over the last yeah. four years of just being a Christian confused to actually seeing the power of God manifest through my life through physical healing wow. and, it, and just um, discipleship. So it's, it's a good journey, man. I've had a lot of ups and downs and mm -hmm. questions answered, but ultimately I think it offers a lot of answers and invites you into a, a great conversation and how to heal the sick and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I'm ex super excited for that to come out. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah. It's, That's awesome. And you have a healing ministry, um, the Lord is moving mightily. Amen. You know, um, people usually, like, if you go to a website, people are like, oh, Carlos Padilla has a healing ministry. And I tell people this. I don't have a healing ministry. I have a loving people ministry. Amen. And Amen. sickness just keeps trying to yes. get in the way. You know, um, <laughs> 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, right? Yes. You can do all yep. these things. You can heal the sick. Yep. You can go to the state to be burned as a martyr. But if you, have love, if, if you don't have love, it profits nothing. Mm. And what... That's chapter 13. You know what chapter 12 and chapter 14 are about? The spiritual gifts. Yes. yes. So, you know, um, I really believe that if you just show up to be a son and a daughter of Christ, that he'll give you the gift to give to the person, yep. whether it's the gifts of healings yep. or the gift of yep. prophecy, the gift of discernment. My job is I just want to be that loving yep. son to manifest the yep. love of the Father. And it, you just hear more about the ministry that, that goes through me because I pray for a lot of sick people. Wow. But I never approach, approach them as a faith healer or as a... Uh, a guy as compartmentalized as the gifts of healings. Yeah. I just come as a son and I've got words of knowledge. I've got all these yeah. things wow. as a byproduct because, you know, we're called to love. Yeah. And, like, I really believe that we're called for, for, for fullness. And how do you measure fullness? Overflow. One thing that I really was excited about when I first got to know you is I was like, okay, all my friends are like, oh, Carlos Padilla's in town and Carlos is here. And I'm like, 
who is Carlos? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I, I'd love to know who this guy is. But then I was like, let me, I like to meet people personally. Yeah. Because I want to not just hear it, I want to know. Right. You know, and when I sat down and got to know you, and we had coffee, like we're having yeah. now, um, I, I found your passion for Jesus. I found your passion to love people well, mm -hmm. and I found your passion to pour into people so that they can go make a difference and right. be the body of Christ that God has created them to be. Right. You know, and that's like, oh, now I know Carlos Padilla, and I'm right. excited about that. You know, um, I, I really, I really, like Martin Luther, when he did the Lutheran Reformation, yeah. you know, I think it was a, a very, very amazing revelation, you know. Yeah. It was based around three things. One was that we're justified by faith alone. Mm -hmm. The second one was sola scriptura, that the word of God is actually identifying who God is in our mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. And the third one was the priesthood of every believer. Mm -hmm. Why this was important in the 1500s is because the Catholic Church had dominated and only the top 10% got to read the word unless they were wow. rich. So Martin wow. was reading his Bible, Martin Luther, and said, whoa, Second Peter says that we're, or First Peter says that we're all a royal priesthood, so why don't we all get to do yep. this? And it was something that the Catholic Church had kind of hid in the, through ritual and through tradition. Wow. It had only been for the priests. So only the elect few had a relationship with God while the rest were just ministers. Yeah. But the Bible says, he says, look, everybody gets to play. Everybody's a royal priesthood yep. now. We all get to minister yep. to the Lord. We all get to be in the Holy of Holies. Why? Because he's inside of us, a tabernacle, you know? Yeah, he's, he's, absolutely. He, he's, he's not yeah. a timeshare. He's a temple. Mm -hmm. He stays. He abides. Yes. And the more we can recognize that, the more we'll see him in holiness, character, power, yep. Yep. healing, yep. all these different things with that unhindered fellowship. But just saying this is that two-thirds of those things were capitalized on. Yeah. Justified by yep. faith alone, Protestants, yep. right? The solar scripture, man, we actually went to the Word of God and made it mm -hmm. living in our lives. Mm -hmm. But what we failed to do... What, didn't complete the revelation that Martin Luther had was the priesthood of every believers. Mm. Right after that, priests would still go and be the man of God yes. and everybody else was yes. just subject. Yes, correct. But the, mis the mission of the gospel is to make everybody a man of God. Yes. Because we're not, in, we're not in the, it's never been made for the man of God. It's always about the God of man. Because we all have the same Holy Spirit yep. inside of us. There's no yep. junior varsity Holy Spirit. <laughs> There's no different levels. It's yes. just your revelation of his goodness and releasing that by faith. When Faithfully United started, uh, God gave me a vision. And when you start walking in that vision, you're still trying to figure out, where am I going with this God? And he guides you along the way. Right. And first I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start sharing how, God, how you're moving, God. So we started these journey episodes. Yeah. And it's been really fruitful. And messages of hope that encouraged many people out there. Absolutely. And then we started going and talking and building relationships. Because uh, I know that it's about a relationship Right. You know, and and when it's a relationship, it's not what can I get out of this? And it's just like this. What can we get out of this, God? Right. No, it's it's when you're in a relationship, you love to be in that relationship. Amen. You're there for one another. You want to be great for each other. Amen. And so I would start building relationships with pastors and ministry leaders and and they do such amazing things. Right. But they are so um, I was focused on them. Right. But it's the body of Christ is where it makes a difference. Amen. Because pastors are shepherding the flock. They're teaching God's word. And they're caring for their community. Right. But when you want to make a major move of God, it has to be the body of Christ. Amen. It has to be each and every one of us knowing that we are equipped and prepared to go make a difference as we are called to do. And all a long-winded thing to say, you're now starting the kingdom Omaha. And you're about discipleship right. and equipping and preparing and right. why does that excite you and why is that so needed now because the message of the gospel if we're doing this right is freedom it's not partial freedom it's complete freedom yeah you know and and that's something yeah. that we're guaranteed as we become christians as we get this new spirit i like to put it this way we're not on a development trying to get more free every day we're in a discovery to see how free we yes. already are yes because if you're on a development trying to get more free every day, well, there's always guilt, shame, and condemnation for where you're not at yet. It's that big magnif yep. magnifying glass yep. of the law on you. Yep. The accuser, the yep. witness against you saying, yes, you read three chapters a day, but you should have read 13. You know? <laughs> and we live under these burdens and it hinders yes. this, the, the union that Jesus paid for us to have with the Father, this reconciled fellowship. So in saying all that, I want to say that we are on a discovery. We're discovering how free we are. Not if we're free. We're not growing in measures of freedom. We're simply on a walk with our Father in the yeah, garden, absolutely. discovering what we can eat, 
what we can explore. And on yeah. that side of it, there's freedom. There's no guilt, shame, condemnation. It's always invitation Man. and just a walk in the garden just like it was. You, you know, you said something about, about the body of Christ, you know. Um, Jesus is the head. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think we have a paraplegic body, you know, and sometimes <laughs> yes. it's, yes. I'll tell you right now, it's bad theology. Like God is good. And if you need more information on that, I'd love to help you out offside because this is a huge message. But it's, we can only bring forth the goodness of God that we believe God to be. Yeah. And the thing is, we, I think under the church and the body of Christ, one of the biggest hindrances is that we put a mystery to God. Mm. I mean, is he all knowing all that? Yes. I mean, is it wonderful? Yes. Is it awesome? Amazing. But remember, God came wrapped in the flesh to eliminate the mystery mm. of who he was. Yes. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 said that Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 15 says that he's the image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. we, we hide behind doctrines and traditions that say, oh, well, God just works in mysterious ways. No, he came, he came so simply, mm. wrapped himself in a body to show you who he was because he didn't want to be mysterious anymore. Are there things I don't know about God? Absolutely. Yep. I wonder, wow, how amazing yep. he is. But he came to unveil the mystery yep. that now we can know him personally. And when we started approaching him like that, we can come like with Hebrews chapter 10, yep. befold him with, before him with confidence. Yes. Confidence, not, ma not trying to manage our sin or, yep. or conscious of our sin, but in this confidence where we're just being loved by the Father. And the whole thing is, this is all for intimacy, man. Ministry is an overflow of, of intimacy. Building wow. churches is an overflow of ministry yeah. the yeah. message of the cross is freedom in christ free people free other people yes period amen you can only free someone in the degree of which you're free to yourself and jesus paid for all who were the with the spirit of the lord is there's freedom right yes who we set free is free indeed not in the process of becoming free but you're free indeed and now you're invited to this discovery of how free you are that'll eliminate a lot of pressure guilt shame yes. combination yes. and even comparison among people wow and that's the message of the gospel. You know, for a long time, I was always on my journey. Like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Shoots and ladders, you know, where you do good for <laughs> yeah, like five yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. And then, ooh, so, you did that sin and you go back to the bottom. Again. You yep. know, and, and it undermines the work of Christ. The thing is, Jesus died on the cross to present you holy and blameless and above reproach. For you to believe otherwise is to contradict the finished work of the cross. A lot of my experiences don't say I'm holy. A lot of my Past experiences and, and even doubts will convince me otherwise. But I am here to believe what God says about me first. Mm. That's humility. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And agreeing with what God says about you through the blood of Jesus. Wow. When we start making that confession, our lives and our experiences will start manifesting what we're believing. That's why I really wow. believe that right believing leads to right living. Not right living leads to right believing. Wow. One thing that's it's just so much fun to watch, and even as we just have a conversation, this is how our conversations go, too. Yeah. Uh, you're passionate about Jesus, and you're passionate about the love that needs to be shared to those Amen. Uh, anywhere you go. You're passionate about God, and you're passionate about others. Yeah. That is so cool. Where does that come from? Where, where did that yeah. begin? It's an overflow of being loved first. I'm telling you, that's man, cool. a lot of the church, we fall under this systematic... Yeah. I'm, I'm not against systematic theology, but man, we have a relationship, guys. We don't have to uh, yeah. come to God legally. Yeah. We, have, we have a father. He's a good father, yeah. you know? So I'm just saying this, like, man, I, I love traveling. I love church, man. I, my heart beats for the church. And this is not critical of the church. I'm just saying this needs to be said. I usually ask Christians or people who believe in God or even pastors, hey, what's the, what do you think the greatest commandment is? Mm -hmm. And most women will say, hey, well, it's easy to love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, strength, and right. love your neighbors. you love yourself, right? Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, I think, to 36, I believe. But if you read the context, these Pharisees are trying to set up Jesus, and they ask him, teacher, what's the greatest commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. yep. And Jesus goes, oh, in the law. Remember, we don't live under the law. We live under grace. He fulfilled the law. Remember that. But Jesus answers them according to the law. Mm -hmm. To love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. To love your neighbors, you love yourself. We see that in our Bibles in red letters. And we try with everything in us to love God with all our heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What was the whole point of the law? Mm -hmm. To show you that you couldn't do it in your own strength. That you needed a Savior. Yep. So we're teaching people based on your effort to love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And you always fall short. 
and you're always exposed when you do. And that was the whole reason why the Pharisees were living like they were and the whole reason why Jesus rebuked them. Mm. Wow. John That's chapter powerful. 13 says, I give you a new commandment. Yep. To love others as I have loved you. you. So what's the prerequisite now to love others is to be loved first. You can't give what you don't have. If you woke up today and you're trying to fulfill this obligation mm -hmm. to love God, you're falling short. I, I hear you, but you just have the wrong rock in the wrong bucket right now. What I want to tell you is that you need to be loved by him first because there's no way you can love your father or your mother or your daughters the way they need to be loved without being wow. loved first. You can't love your wife. You can't give your wife the husband that she deserves that God's creator, creator to be on your own effort. The whole law was there to expose nope. that you couldn't. But that this man, Jesus, would come, be a fulfillment of it. You put faith in his faithfulness and now grace is released. Yep. We're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. And now we have grace. Me loving my wife is an overflow of my intimacy with yes. him. I don't wake up every day and try to love God without my heart, body, soul, and strength. I wake up to be loved by God and our natural response is to give him everything. I had this visual. Um, I remember this graphic. It was like a triangle. You have the husband on one side and the wife on the other side. Right. And God in the middle. Right? So good. And it is, it is it's our personal relationship. Amen. And the closer we get to him, the closer we, we become with Amen. our spouse. Well, when wow. I'll put it like this. You're already with him. The more you get acquainted, the fact yeah. that you're already with him, yep. It's over. I can never live my leave my wife, love her in the way she needs to be loved, man. Because you know humans are not created to meet each other's needs. I know psychology will tell you, oh, well, you're not meeting her need here, and she's not meeting her need here. You, you can never meet your wife's need. Your your wife, your husband only has one need, and that's his affection, mm -hmm. his pleasure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you live in self righteousness. So if you get that, well, then I get yeah. to love my wife. I don't have to. See, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. I'm just saying now that Jesus came, you don't have to be commanded to. You get to because his affections for you first. Remember, it wasn't for we so love the world, we so love God that he sent his son. It was because he so loved the world mm -hmm. that he sent Jesus. It's his love for us that compels us. So I mean I'm just saying, in all of your facet relationship, I mean I've lived under the 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 burden of trying to do it myself of, okay, I'm in church, I'm loving Jesus, man, I'm studying, I'm doing Bible studies, I'm doing all these things, but if I'm doing it to try to get somewhere that I don't know I'm already at, dude, I'm running over Jesus already. <laughs> the thing is, I do Absolutely. it from a fulfillment. I wake up every day to be loved by him, and the byproduct is that I'm yep. loving my buddy Jeff, I love the poor people, yep. I can do this and do that, and I think that's the body Christ needs to get to. It's effortless. You'll see more miraculous happen by accident than you trying to muster up faith. That's how you in my life, um, you work hard, you do the right things, you get places. Right. But recently, uh, God put me in a position where it's, you work hard, it's not going to help you. Yeah. Um, you do the right things, it's not always going to advance you. Right. And it's like, oh man. But you are still asked to do those things. Right, absolutely. But you need to have trust, you need to have faith in. And we so focus on our works. And wow, we are enslaved to that you yeah. know we just need to have um good fruit but it's it's not our works that get us to heaven it's jesus right. that gets us to heaven he's the way the truth the life right and we're so focused on our works right. we need to try harder we need to do more we need Amen. to do better or we can just love jesus with all of our hearts and love others as he asks us to do right and it's all responsive of how much he loves you first. I'm telling you, like, when you're loved by God and you understand his pleasure for you through the finished work of the cross, there's this thing called the joy of your salvation. Not mm -hmm. the rid of it or the complaint of it, but yeah. the joy of your yeah. salvation. And works are completed through your faith. We're not saved by our works, mm -hmm. but when we have great, when we understand how much he loves us, the works are a byproduct. Healing yeah. the sick is a byproduct. I tell people this. Galatians 5.1 says that he set us free mm -hmm. for freedom's sake. Wow. He didn't set us free so we can plant churches. He didn't set us free so we can heal the sick. He didn't set us free to go even win the lost. He set us free for freedom's sake. Yep. But it's free people who do those things effectively without getting burnt out. Yep. And without, because yep. ministry can be a drag. I got to admit, it my first year of yep. ministry was a drag. Why? Because I put it on my performance. If 50% of the people got healed, man, I'd be like, well, why didn't the other 50? And I'd take this burden on me that Jesus already bore. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, now that I have intimacy with God, and I've understood the gospel of righteousness, and that I'm in right standing with God and I have his nature imparted to me through the blood of Jesus, and that's my starting point, I can't lose. Yep. I can't lose. And it's just this intimate wow. fellowship. We're talking about byproduct. 
of some right. product. And there's two examples I have of this. It's one is um, our almost three-year-old daughter. And because my wife and I have a great relationship with Jesus, she now has a great relationship with Jesus. When we pray at night, she's praying about others before she prays about Amen. herself. Praise God. She might just know how to say people's names, but yeah. <laughs> they're important to her. Yeah, absolutely. It's about relationships. And the other thing, too, is um, a recent prayer walk that um, a bunch of us went after. You know, we prayed for people. We handed out waters as a way to just care for others mm -hmm. on a super hot day. Right. And we glorified God. We worshiped Him. Mm -hmm. And that. the tears that were coming out of people that we prayed for told me, this is simple, but it makes a difference. Right. The refreshing water and just being handed something that anyone needs mm. it was a beautiful thing but the thing that really stood out to me the most was pouring into those that came alongside us to do what the lord put in our hearts right. and just pouring into them and saying you are important what you did today was important the lord didn't just have us go for a walk yeah we did it with purpose and we did it for a reason because people need to be reminded that they are loved and that Jesus loves them. And to know that people are realizing, I enjoy doing this. Yeah. I want to do this. Right. I want to lead this. Right. I have skills in this. I have passions in this. And that is one of the most important things I was excited about, is when people start realizing, man, the Lord's called me to do this, and now I need to go do that. Amen, yeah. You know, it, and the thing is, too, it's, it's, it's got to be instigated by the love of God. You know, like, um, like I love seeing the sick get healed. But before I was born again, I didn't care if people were sick or not. So mm. it wasn't me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's all God. Like, I never thought about people being sick or in wheelchairs or dying of cancer. I never thought about that. I never had compassion for it. Mm -hmm. But now that I got born again, it's God's compassion inside of me. Why? Because I'm a son. I share the same attributes. Yeah. Yeah. He does. So I think, it, like you said, everything you do, do unto the Lord. Do it as, I work to, uh, yeah. as an act of worship. Yeah. Man, whether I'm washing dishes, I'm doing it in worship. And yeah. I do a better job worshiping. The dishes get more clean than me being like, oh, man, I'm trying to please God. It's just because I'm in love with him, man, you yeah. know? And the thing is, your only prize in Christianity is Christ himself. Yeah. And then when the way you minister to people is a byproduct. Why? Because the compassion's there. Yeah. If we just get his, his root, the fruit will be good. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't have to, I'm not trying to go and earn fruit. Yep. I understand that I have a new root in me, the root of righteousness, the root mm -hmm. of compassion, love, you know, all these powerful things, these promises of God. And mm -hmm. as I commune with him, the byproduct... It's people yeah. getting saved, getting healed. I would never want to share the gospel, man. Mm. But the thing is, I love, I value freedom so much in Christ that I experience myself. How can I not hold it in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got to share it. I mean, there was a gentleman outside the coffee shop that walked in, and he looked like a rough-looking individual. He's walking in. I was like, hey, what's up, champion? And he smiled, and he looked at me, and I was like, hey, man, I just want to let you know, man, that Jesus is for you today, man. Yeah. And he's like, man, thank you, man, bless you. And he just kept walking, you know? And, and it's things like that, because you don't know where he's walking. He could have been going to hold up a... A bar, I don't know, you know, right. you don't know what people are walking out of or what they're about to walk in through, but you can be that, that factor of love, yeah. that compassion, like you did during the prayer walk, you know, yeah. Yeah. and it's a very, very intense moment right now. It's, mm -hmm. you know, with all this going on, yeah. the right yeah. and stuff, you guys are on the front lines, which is, which is amazing, you know, and, and it's, it's a tangible presence of God and the thing is you can't manipulate that. Mm -hmm. You can try to do it and you'll know because you get frustrated with whether it works or not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it works. You just carry love and. Some people will deny you. They yeah. deny Jesus yeah. all the time. I mean, we Absolutely. gotta understand that. But it's good to be out there and be the hands and feet. You know, um, yeah. I mean, that's how we how we reconcile the world back to Him. We'll start ending up on this: uh, the importance of discipleship. Um, that's something that the Lord put in my heart: equipping Amen. and discipling. Right. Because um, God didn't tell us to just stay right where you're at, and um, you know what, just kick your feet up. He said, "No, I need you to go, go out and make right. disciples." And with COVID-19, we did a great job of, I think we try to do a great job of understanding what's going on first. Right. Before you can really go into battle, you have to understand where the battle is and how to go about it. But we got scattered and placed in our own homes and right. isolated from one another. And we couldn't communicate well and we couldn't go right. make a difference well. Hmm. But then people started realizing, no, the Lord is asking us to go and not just stay here. I think there's a, a need where we just, we need to know that uh, we are called. We are, we are his sons and daughters. He calls us by our name. He knows 
everything about us, and He equipped us with everything that we need Amen. to do what He called us to do. Yeah. The gospel is not going to preach itself. He mm -hmm. didn't say, go into all the world and pray for me to save everybody. Yeah. He said, go into all the world yeah. and preach the gospel, baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and so on. Lay hands on the sick. You're going to see them recover. You know, they'll speak in new tongues. All these things yeah. are promises of God. That's actually the inheritance of a believer. You know, and, and yeah, the thing is, too, I think we, we, um, we, we pawn it back on God because we don't want to take the responsibility of manifesting Him. Mm -hmm. We are the greatest representation of God's goodness yeah. to this world. God could press one button and everybody would be saved. God mm -hmm. could press one button and everybody would be encouraged and healed and saved. But the thing is, He's a God of love. He gives people an option. Yeah. But we are the that defining mechanism with the power of the Holy Spirit to witness Amen. and to see people receive the victory in Christ just like we profess we have. You know, you, you mentioned that word discipleship, but did you know that less than 5% of people in church actually disciple someone? Wow. Doesn't mean they don't go to wow. church. Right. Doesn't mean they're not right. shaking hands and taking uh, and volunteering the church. Yeah. But remember, he said, my desire is that they all get saved and come yes. to the knowledge of the truth. Yes. You know, so the thing is, it's not about just getting people saved. It's getting them discipled into the knowledge of the truth so they can experience some freedom. And you don't have to tell them to go do it. They'll willfully go do yeah. it because they understand this freedom in Christ. You know, and... um. You know, I think, too, you know, the church has to be bold, man. That's mm -hmm. one thing that yep. I preach hard is boldness. You know, um, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Yes. Man, if you go into most churches and preach that, you get kicked out for being arrogant. Yeah. You yeah. know, but Paul said, imitate yeah. me as I imitate yeah. Christ. So the reason why discipleship is so weak is because not enough Christians are confident to say, man, I'm getting filled with the Spirit of Christ. It's safe to follow me while you keep your eyes on oh, me. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the message of Christianity, you know. I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's like the violent ticket by force kind yeah. of theme, you know? And I think we've been given everything, like you said, man, all the completion. And it's our job to discover what's there and to release it. But discipleship, the thing is everybody disciples somebody. Muslims disciple people, construction workers mm -hmm. disciple people. Discipleship's mm -hmm. not just like a, it's, we turn it into a vague term. Mm -hmm. I say discipleship's this. If you can stand next to the 12 that follow Jesus and people wouldn't be able to tell the difference in how you live, you're a disciple. Wow. And I know that's in, that's challenging, and it was for me. But man, I mean, he said, you go make disciples and teach them as I taught you. Are wow. we really living that stature of life? I'm not condemning you. I'm inviting you that you have everything inside of you, and this is what it means to be a believer. Believer is not just going to church. Believer means that you fully identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Wow. And, that's, and then when that gets inside of you, man, you don't have to be told to go on outreach. You reach out everywhere you go because, man, you're in this mm -hmm. constant communion this constant amazing fellowship with the Father. And I think, you know, discipleship, ha oh, man, I'll just put it this way. If you're listening, man, if we're preaching a weak gospel, your people are walking out a weak gospel. Mm. I'm telling you, if, if, if the people you're leading aren't manifesting Jesus, there's got to be something else going on. Wow. You know, the gospel is the power of God unto transformation. Yep. It's the power of God, you know. Yep. Why? Because it reveals the righteousness of God. Mm. The same righteousness we partake in from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. Wow. A better translation for that last is that those who are justified by faith will live. Wow. I remember reading Jesus talking to his disciples. Uh, I believe it was John chapter 14 and 16. And he's saying, I am going to go to the Father. Right, yeah. And when I go, it is to your advantage. Because when I go, my Father will send a helper, the Holy Spirit, right. in my name. Right. And he'll teach you all things. And so I think too many times we realize, well, I don't know what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. No, he just asks you to go. That's and it. the Holy Spirit will guide you as you go. And he will teach you all things. Amen. That's so good, man. You know, if you ask a lot of uh, believers in the church today, hey, when would you want to live? And a lot of people say, well, I want to live when Jesus was there so I can see him do things. And Jesus objects to you. He says, you know what? It's actually better that I leave. Mm -hmm. Why? Because now I can get my spirit in you yes. and now you can take my spot. Yes. That's the whole wow. thing. You know, G you know, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 10, just real quick. Yeah. This is like my life turning voice when, or turning uh, point when I read this. It says that right at the end of chapter 9 that he just does a sermon on the mountain. He heals all these people and they come mm -hmm. to him like sheep without a shepherd. Mm. Yes. And he looks at them with compassion. And he says, the harvest is much and the workers are few. Mm -hmm. Notice he never complains about the harvest. It's not about the people who aren't mm -hmm. saved. It's about the workers. And he looks at his disciples and says, man, we need to learn. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus says this, go pray to the God of the harvest that he'll send out laborers to collect the harvest. So they go and pray, and the very next sentence, which is the beginning of chapter 10, remember there's no chapter indentions right. in the Bible, really. 
He gave them authority to do what they prayed about. Wow. See, you can pray for revival or you can be revival. God's not holding back something. Like, you know, I know we say God's doing new things. No, he's not. We're just getting back to what he's always wanted to do. Like, God's not waking up today and saying, oh, I want to see revival. He's always wanted to see it. And he's given us the means to the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. So we're not doing something. I don't think God's wow. done anything new since Pentecost Sunday. We're just getting more acclimated and more, more in touch with what he's already done in the promise. And the more we agree with that, the more of that entity wow. comes out. So, I mean, this is not a new message, man. This is what the disciples did and the early apostles did. And this is why they saw everybody healed and all this stuff. And what we're doing is we're just getting back to the beginning. We're wow. simply getting back to what he's already designed for us to do. It sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? But it started with one man named Jesus, who came here, who was God, who came here in flesh, right. who told and taught 12 other people, Amen. who then went and told and taught other people, right. who then t went and told and taught other people. Told and taught, come on. Man, what if we just tell and teach a few other people, right. and they can go help do the same? That's disciple right there, man. You know, he said, Amazing. he didn't say go into the world and make converts. He said go out and make disciples, <laughs> learners. With that, what is a final message that God's putting in your heart? Whether it's a new yeah. believer, someone that needs to be refreshed right. in their faith, or uh, just needs to have hope in this time. Yeah, I want to talk to the church right now. Like, I love talking to non-believers, and we do that. But if we get it right in the church, mm -hmm. they're not going to yep. be, you know. Yep. There's a verse that says that he came to save that which was lost. Not who. Mm. That. What was that? The identity that Adam gave up. And he came and went all that back. And now that we have the that, the who will get saved Yep. So I want to encourage you guys today, church. I'm going to say something right now. This is, might tweak you a little bit, but this is the truth. God doesn't owe us anything. God does not owe us anything. But in that same measure, I want to tell you too, you do not owe God anything. Hear me out. In the, in the book of Matthew, he goes through parables about a farmer going through and he finds a pearl. Mm -hmm. And then he sells everything he has to get that pearl. Mm -hmm. You see, you're the treasure. I know in my life, I can look at that verse and say, in my life, I've given up a lot because I found this gospel and man, I sold everything to get it. Mm. And yes, it's my prize. But that story is more about God selling everything to get his treasure, which is you. Yeah. You do not owe God anything. You are his treasure and he is wow. your treasure. But when we start understanding that, you'll start getting everything you think you owe him by byproduct instead of having to work for it. Mm. God doesn't owe you anything. You don't owe God anything either. You are his treasure. He sold everything, gave son, his son, bankrupt heaven to get you back in a right relationship with him. Yes. But being in that right relationship will get all the spoil of the plunder Jesus Christ already paid for on the cross. Mm. Sin being destroyed, sickness being destroyed, and having union with the Father just as he's always wanted it. Wow. So I want to invite you guys into that today, man. Us as a body of Christ, we need to rise up, believe the word of God over our experience, and start living like that. I mean, the word of God says, who we set free is free indeed. Mm. We're not in the process of becoming free. Yeah. You're on the discovery. Remember, we're living on the other side of the cross. We're not trying to, we're not on a journey to the cross. We're on a journey from the cross. And I just pray today that you receive the fullness of what he's paid for in his word, all the promises, the total freedom, so you too can be an mm -hmm. avenue, a beacon of hope to the lost. Because wow. if, you know what, I'm originally from San Antonio. I went yeah. to school at Bethel School of Ministry in Reading. And we just moved to Omaha, Nebraska. You know why we're here? Is because this is the heartland Omaha. Mm. And if we can get it right in the yes. heart, it'll pump to the rest of yes. the body. And the United States is a gauge for the rest of the world. So let's get together, yeah. man. Let's join. I thank you yep. for having us on Faithfully Absolutely. United. But we have to be united in the yes. truth and the, the, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just in some kind of community. Yep. We have to be united in this because... Yeah. The gospel we preach is only the strength that your people are going to walk out. Mm. And if we can just get this right, get the big rock in first, that God is love. There's no darkness in him at all. At all. And let that become our message and let his grace empower that. We'll see the lost get found. We'll see the sick get healed. And we'll mm. see the greatest Amen. revival that he's always written about, that he's always wanted. Because his disciples said, yes, I'm willing to believe you, God, in spite of my past, in spite of my experiences, and be empowered to be the love and the light that you called me to wow. be. Wow. Uh, let's end in prayer. Yeah. Uh, Father, we just thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for this, this time to be in your presence. We thank you for your reminders and your refreshers, Lord. You remind us of who you are and that you love us very much. And you refresh us and revitalize us and give us hope when we just need to be encouraged and strengthened. Amen. Lord, you are everything.
You are mighty, you are strong, and you are love. Lord, you are, you are absolutely amazing. Amen. Lord, we lose so much sight because we focus on the things around us when we just need to focus on you. Uh, Lord, I just, I'm just so thankful for men and women who want to make a difference in your kingdom and who have a passion for you. Lord, I ask that you strengthen and guide and protect and send Carlos, everyone you surround him with, and everyone that he makes a disciple with. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that he becomes a discipleship factory, Lord, mm -hmm. one that produces many many disciples. One that goes out and shares a gospel with passion and with love, Lord. And with boldness and confidence. Amen. Lord, right now I just, I just, I'm thinking of Matthew, it's, I can't remember, it's either 14 or 16, where Jesus ends by telling his disciples, arise, let us go from here. Amen. And as a body of Christ, it's time to arise and Amen. go from here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I Thank appreciate you so it. much for being a part. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing to Jeff's stuff. It's great to be here, man. We look forward to building this amazing city with you and, and loving you. So more details will be ahead Absolutely. on our website if you want to check that out. Uh, uh, thekingdomishere.org. And um, there's more information coming out. But I mean, hit me up. Add me as a friend. Let's get talking, man. Let's build this kingdom, man. Let's see Jesus get what he paid for. Amen. for. Thank you for, uh, man, just having this, Absolutely. this avenue of just reaching many people and seeing people get what Jesus yeah. paid for. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless. Cheers. <laughs>